take that bitch and that's the power of the soul king. Now all I need to do is steal the Ponoga, and there's nothing that can stop me. Hey dumbass, did you really think there was nobody here that could stop you? Did you really think you could just break into my house and take my crap? Well, you were wrong. Well... I'm screwed now, aren't I? Yeah, you're screwed, and by the way, I've captured your captain. Well, shit! Hey guys, One Piece Nation here today, and welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 849. Now, I want to quickly, before we begin, talk about what the editor said about the pacing becoming faster earlier this week. Now, this is what the editor meant. A lot of people thought that meant Oda would go into rush the, the, the theories. I don't believe that. I think what the editor meant was, we're not going to spend entire chapters on plot points. You'll understand what I mean later, but just to give you an example, the, stuff, the first thing we're going to talk about with Chopper and Carrot in Dressrosa, that would have been an entire chapter. This time, it was just a little bit, maybe like five, six pages. Okay, but let's start off with my man, Brooke, and my girl, Carrot. Okay, not Brooke. Chopper. Okay, so this week, Chopper and Carrot went in. So it was revealed that, uh, the carrot that was hanging over the pot isn't even the real carrot. It's just a version of carrot that was created by Brulee. It's one of the fakes. They're using Brulee's own fake carrot to trick Brulee and, um, Carrot is just hiding in the ceiling above, making noises, like talking, like, oh no, oh no, don't drop me. Which is really interesting. I really like that. Now the twist that I did not see that coming. I was expecting something like Chopper was gonna need to save Carrot, but that's not what happened. Carrot jumps down and she goes in. This is the reason I've been saying it for a while. If anyone is going to join the crew, which I don't think anybody will, Carrot need to join. Carrot must join this crew. Carrot is amazing. She uses her electrical power to take out some of the guys. And her and Chopper fatherize the guy. I didn't need to describe the fight. Like Chopper go monster point, pissed up the crocodile, and flips it over. I mean, they fatherize them. It's not even a contest. Who's stronger here? They, they easily beat Brulee. Or brulee, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. Which is very interesting to see. However, I do feel you could have expanded on this a little bit more. But I really don't mind, if you get honestly. I never really cared about this plot point in the first place. So I'll let it slide because I really don't care. Um, I'm actually kind of happy it's wrapping up because I feel like Oda has been ignoring it. So I'm much, I'm much more satisfied with Oda wrapping up the plot point. Then Oda putting it in the background and just waiting and then finishing it up like during the fight with Big Mom or something in the side. I'd much rather he finish it up all the side plot and then we continue the main one. So they then take her mirrors and they now have the ability to use the mirrors to get anywhere on Whole Cake Island or in Totland pretty much instantly. Which will also help speed up the pacing obviously. Because if they go, they, in this way, there won't be any running around. One of the biggest complaints with Dressrosa was, of course, that they were just running. Like, there, I had to, I love One Piece, but there were chapters of Dressrosa that were just Luffy running in circles because he kept on getting knocked off the plaza and couldn't fight Doflamingo. It was really annoying. So the fact that they don't need to walk and run around anymore is amazing. Now let's talk about Brooke. So, Brooke is winning his fight with a guard. He fought some girl with like braids in her hair. I mean, like, she looks decently powerful, but she wasn't that memorable. Maybe Brooke just, he one shot her. He one shot everybody he fights, which is very impressive because we don't see Brooke fight a lot. And when we are seeing him fight, he's fodderizing everybody. It's like, this guy, Brooke is like really impressive. Why is he not fighting more? I may need to reconsider my opinion about Brooke because he is being immensely youthful for one. Now, of course, this is not normal. Brooke is almost always useless and weak as hell, but, you know, 
Or right, make you more relevant and stronger, I'll give you that to all you Brooke fans who constantly disagree with me about my opinion on Brooke. But there was just one shotting down, and he, and he talked about how he cannot allow himself to fail because he made Pedro debate. And don't worry, we're going to talk about Pedro. But so he's just fighting, and then like, Big, I think Moody mentioned it to Big Mom, like, don't you want to do something else intruder? And she's like, you know what? Screw it, you're all incredibly incompetent. So instead of having one of the squeak commanders, Ansel Brooke, she just goes in and she's like, why are you trying to ruin my day, man? And Brooke is just like, Big Mom, and it cuts off there. Now, my opinion on that, I'll be completely honest with you, Brooke is dead. He's doomed. He's done. He's gonna get captured. There's nothing he can do. Luffy can barely cut Cracker. Luffy needed Nami's help to beat Cracker. This is Brook and his opponent right now is Big Mom. There is no debating who's going to win this fight. There is no what if. There is no possibility. Brook is going to lose and be captured. There is no getting away. There is no escaping. Brook is done. And then Yoko, I'm sorry to any Brook fans who think you can get out of it. You're really. You need to get your head examined it because this is a Yoko. This is somebody that pretty much told Sanji, I can kill anybody in the world I want, which is the word. I mean, this, this is a woman that had taken out an entire pirate fleet by herself just because of her sheer power. This is not somebody to mess around with, so Brooke is dead. Now, we, we, we do get a little bit of Pedro in this chapter, and we get some interactive between him and Togoma. We learned that, one, he's an ex-captain of the pirate crew, I forgot the name, it was like the Knox pirate, the Noex pirate or something, but he's the ex-captain, and him and Pete Togoma had some kind of past. But what we did learn in this chapter is that Pedro used to care about his life tremendously. I assume he was like, not like Usopp kind of a scaredy cat, but he was like always thinking, how can I make sure I survive this? Surviving is the most important thing. And what I think happened, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, what I think happened is I think Pedro did something really stupid. Well, we know he did something stupid. He came to Whole Cake Island. He tried to get the Ponoglyph. He did something. Whatever he did, it was more than still in the Ponoglyph. Because he pissed off Big Mom. He pissed off Big Mom so much that she took away 15 years of his life. And he openly admitted in this chapter, he will not live to the end of the arc. He is dying. He lost 15 years of his lifespan. He doesn't have much time left, and he's going to die. So this is my opinion on the matter. I think Pedro is going to die. I'm not one of those people that goes out and says, this character will die this arc, this character will die this arc, this character will die, this person is going to die. You know, One Piece doesn't kill characters. They've only killed two characters in the present timeline. Yes, they kill characters in flashback, but it's very rare for Oda to kill a character in the present. He's only killed Whitebeard and Ace. But honestly, I don't see how he can survive. It isn't like a battle wound or being screwed over by an opponent. He's just aging. He lost 15 years worth of lifespan. He's just going to die at age. There's nothing anybody can really do about that. I'm sorry. And left, the only chance they have a survival, and they can somehow get Big Mom to return that to him. I don't see that happening. Big Mom, at this point, in my opinion, is 100% evil, villain, antagonist, not going to help the crew. I think that theory is dead, in my opinion. That theory is dead to me, alright? You still believe it, and you had your reason, good for you. But to me, I, I can't see it anymore. You know, it was a time where I was like, maybe. Now I'm like, no. But, so, what we learned is that Togoma and Pedro, their scars, it appears they gave each other those scars. How that happened, we don't know. Well, if we will get that information, probably. But, I am very curious to how they got those scars. Because when I, the first thing I thought of while watching that scene was like Blackbeard and Shank. Like, it was like, I don't think they got those scars in an even fight. Something, some bad crap went down. And Togoma and Pedro were scarred for life. And yeah, so. That's all that's up with them. We get a little bit with Sanji. Where he's cooking for pudding. Pudding's been gone. She didn't show up for her lunch meeting. And he says she knows pudding's been depressed. So Sanji being Sanji decides. 
You know what? I'm not gonna be married to this girl. I might as well be a good husband. And it's Nanji. And he starts cooking for her. And we just, of course, confirmed the theory that putting it up to something, most likely running away. Now, we do at one point get some sync with the vent smoke. We are talking about how Pudding and Sanji need to come live with them. So they can have Pudding as like a quote unquote hostage. I assume what Judge mean by this is he wants to be able to say a big mom. No, no, no. You break our deal, we kill Pudding. Because let's be honest, Big Mom's a pirate. As far as Judge knows, she can turn around the day after this alliance and she can just steal all their troops and be like, well, screw you. Sweet Commander, kill the vent smokes. She could, she could do that if she wanted to. So, the last thing I want to talk about, besides the Vim Smoke thing, how the Vim Smoke are a complete dirtbag, which that's really all it was, but the Vim Smoke just being terrible people, they, you can tell, they're like, even Goji's like, I cannot wait for Sanji to come live with us. I'm like, oh god, I don't even want to know what Yoji's thinking of doing to Sanji. Even though they can't do anything to him, that's besides the point. Um, so Sanji, of course, put cooking for pudding, as I mentioned earlier. We know pudding gone. And Sanji, he being informed that Luffy and Nami being held captive, and he's like, shut the hell up. He's like, shut up. Sanji did not want to hear about Luffy and Nami being captured. It's too much for him. He's like, no. No, I can't. I can't handle that. So he tells him to shut up and just ask for the ingredient. And then, you know, that scene ends, and we cut to a scene of somebody with their hand on the wall, and we see Riju really beat up. Like, Riju bleeding. Something happened to Riju. What happened to Riju? I don't know. Some people are fat. I've heard I've seen a couple, I haven't seen a lot of speculations. Yeah, I've been working on midterm stuff. But I saw a lot of stuff about, um, I saw a lot of stuff about Riju being attacked by Pudding. A lot of stuff about Big Mom doing this. I'm not really sure. All I know is that something happened to Riju. And I have a feeling whatever happened to Riju is going to be what makes her join the side of the crew. What makes her want to help get Sanji out of there. Because we, Riju had been, she kind of been on a divide this whole time. Like, she'd been like, yeah, listen, Sanji, I kind of care about you. Like, she kind of cared about Sanji, but not really. And it just, it's all really confusing, but she kind of cared about Sanji. But she's so selfish that she's like, I'm not going to let anyone know I even give a single crap about you, because if they knew, they'd treat me just like they treat you. So, Riju is probably going to be like, you're a screwy guy, and decide to help the crew, or something else happened, and maybe we'll turn her against Sanji. That, that would actually be a pretty interesting matchup, like a mini clash between Riju and Sanji. That would be very interesting, but I still want to see Sanji versus one of his brothers, maybe Sanji versus Judd. If I had to rate this chapter, I'm hesitant to give it a 10 out of 10, solely because I don't really feel comfortable with this new pacing yet. If I had to rate this chapter, maybe like a, I'd say 8 out of 10, because it hit all the plot points, but I'm not... I understand the need for the new pacing, and I do appreciate the new pacing, but I'm also kind of like, we're moving a little fast, and I don't love the new pacing, but I can... I understand why, and I'm happy about it, but I also don't like it at the same time. So, 8 out of 10 for this chapter of One Piece. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. Check out the videos I did on Gear 2nd, and Gear 3rd, and Gear 4th Explained. Links to all those videos will be right when this ends. You'll see the links to those. The links to my Twitter and my Facebook page are in the description box down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more videos. And above all else, guys, have a great day. Thank God. Now I need to get back to study for midterm. Well, at least there's nothing else I need to worry about, right? Nah, who cares?